right so in this video i'm going to give a very brief introduction to propensity score and for this i am basically going to use uh, this peter austin's 2011 paper as the reference um, and this paper is freely av available in the website all right so before i talk about the implementation detail let me define what a propensity score modeling is propensity model is basically the probability of receiving treatment given covariates that means we are basically trying to get the uh, model the probability of being selected or being receiving the treatment or being exposed given the observed covariates and this is a balancing score if you are working on a randomized clinical de trial data with enough sample size then the propensity score might be known it might not be exactly 0 0.5 as is written here but it will be a known propensity score um, so there are a couple of assumptions that we have for the propensity score the first one is that we cannot have an unmeasured confounding so the complete list of l or at least the sufficient list of covariates should be included in our l positivity is another assumption that means that this probability cannot be either zero or one exactly that means uh, a person should not be sure or guaranteed to receive treatment or a person should not be guaranteed to not receive the treatment neither of them uh, can happen um, all of the subjects will have to have no matter from which characteristic they come from uh, they have to have some possibility of getting the treatment whether they actually get it or not that's something different they have to have the possibility of getting the treatment and there should be sufficient overlap if there is no overlap between the treated and the control uh, group then we cannot really estimate the say for example if you if we are aiming for ATT that we have described in one of the previous videos uh, that cannot be estimated if we do not have the sufficient overlap all right so how can we estimate this so basically generally speaking our exposure variables are uh, binary variables say for example in one of the previous examples that i have used a person is either uh, suffering from rheumatoid arthritis or that person do not have any arthritis so in that case our a can either be one or zero right whenever you have a binary exposure and you are uh, adjusting for a number of covariates then we can use logistic regression um, there are some other machine learning methods that can handle binary outcomes and we can employ them as well to uh, fit this regression basically what is this regression the outcome is the exposure variable and the uh, L is basically the list of covariates that you have in your uh, analysis and um, the goal of this uh, regression fitting is prediction we do not really care about what are the coefficients associated with uh, various variables as, uh, within L and the model can be rich you can include interaction term polynomial term and things like that uh, and you can make a rich model uh, but not to the extent that it is highly collinear to the extent the predictions are not good enough uh, even though uh, we are using a machine learning method or logistic regression method to estimate this probability we have to keep um, a good focus on what is the real goal here the real goal is more about uh, obtaining balance so in one of our previous video we talked a bit about balance uh, but we will get to that a bit later all right so there are some literature where they suggest what kind of variables we should include in our propensity score model generally speaking 
looking at the outcome data while modeling propensity score is not suggested what we should do we should go for subject area expertise to figure out um, what are the variables that are associated with both treatment and the uh, control variable uh, sorry the outcome variable and then we try to adjust for those variables that are impacting both of these uh, treatment and outcome variables in such a way that it is modifying the relationship of interest so those variables we should control the risk factor of the outcome variable we should control if you have a known instrument um, that is highly uh, predictive of your treatment status then you should worry ab about whether you you should include that variable in your model or not if you have a known instrument uh, it is better to leave that out otherwise you might uh, have increased variance as well as uh, bias if you know some variables that are neither associated with the outcome nor associated with the treatment maybe that is just noise and do not include them in your in your propensity score model but these are not something that you explore in your data set and find out these are the variables that you talk with your um, subject area expert um, and then try to figure out whether those factors are something that you want to include in your propensity score model or not there are uh, many different ways by which propensity score uh, modeling can be done um, in here i'm just going to talk about matching so in terms of propensity score matching uh, there are four different steps we need to follow and that is if you read this um, particular article you will see all of these uh, four steps in, with detailed description so i'm just going to mention this uh, that we have these four steps and then i will show a bit how those four steps work the first step is obviously uh, fit the propensity score model we also call it exposure model because the exposure variable is the outcome here once we feed the propensity score model then we extract the propensity scores and then we match uh, subjects from the treated group and the control group using those estimated propensity scores and then we create a matched data set or matched sample and we then try to check the covariate balance or standardized mean difference or smd in that matched sample if we are satisfied with our uh, balance then only we move on to the step four and then estimate our treatment effect so basically this is an outcome model and we try to estimate our treatment from this model all right so in step one what do we do we do in step one we basically try to uh, model our exposure based on the covariates and then um, we get a fit and then uh, from that fit we predict the uh, exposure and those predictions are actually the propensity scores and you can make take numerical summaries of those propensity scores and since these propensity scores are basically probabilities you will see those probabilities vary from 0 to 1 and you can also draw some graphical uh, plots to figure out whether they have sufficient overlap or not so in this plot we see uh, the overlap is okay so the second step is more about when you have already estimated the propensity score then uh, there are some matching algorithms one of the most popular algorithm is known as the nearest neighborhood approach and by nearest neighborhood matching we try to uh, match by the propensity score note that propensity score is a continuous variable and it cannot be if you if you try to match uh, exact propensity scores that will not work you will reduce your sample size uh, drastically uh, even if you can find uh, one or two match so instead of exact matching we do this nearest neighborhood and uh, we do not want to match someone just because they are the nearest 
uh, we want to match them uh, within a certain bound as well otherwise if there is a gap in the propensity scores you will uh, probably match someone who is on the other end of that gap so we also need to define a predefined bound um, say for example it could be 0.1 uh, because we are dealing with probability 0.1 is already 10 percent uh, there are other type of matching that are uh, used optimal matching or CEM or full matching uh, but for now I'm just going to talk about the nearest neighborhood matching and in this nearest neighborhood um, say for example if this is the treated everyone is the else is the control then this red dot who is the propensity of the treated will be matched with the uh, blue dot which is the closest what happens if you have equidistant uh, propensity scores in the control group then by the nearest neighborhood matching uh, we will try to select uh, at least one by random and discard the other two all right so when we talk about caliper remember in here we were talking about the predefined bounds so this is uh, the caliper so by this um, radius we are trying to find the uh, control uh, to match if a control is beyond that bound we would not match that uh, with this patient or treated group group subject we would simply discard this uh, treated group subject because we could not find any match but in here we have three so we can simply pick at uh, one by random and then discard the other two all right, so in R, there are um, many packages that can do that, like matching package, match it package, and there you can specify uh, which type of regression you want to use. Usually, logistic regression is very popular. Whether you want to match with a replacement, um, whether you want to match a, just matched um, by pair or one to n where n could be more than one it could be five it could be ten so for one treated you can find five control and of course you can define um, caliper so uh, two standard deviation of the logit of the ps uh, is usually the uh, caliper that we use um, one thing i should mention here is that when you use match with replacement or when you use one to n matching where n is greater than one then generally you have some additional consideration for variance calculation so to keep the analysis simple you might want to choose uh, matching without replacement and pair matching so that will keep your analysis much more simplistic assuming assuming you have um, enough sample size in both of the treated and untreated group um, that is a possibility or uh, could be something that is simplifying your assumption all right so in here you can see we were doing a pair matching and for 317 patient we found 317 control so a, a lot of patient was not matched so you could potentially use one to uh, 10 matching uh, to find even more controls that would improve your uh, standard error um, and you can also see the propensity score balance in the matched group and um, you can numerically also check the balance right how do you check the balance so we are in our step three now where we are checking our balance and we have to define a predefined smd or uh, standardized mean difference here we have defined uh, less than 0 0.2 and we see that in the original uh, table uh, which is unmatched our smds most of these are greater than 0 0.2 and then we did the matching uh, 317 people in each group and that gave us the new smd you can see all of those smds are less than 0 0.2 so by that criteria we can say that we are satisfied with our matching and then in the step four what we do that is we simply calculate the crude um, regression in the matched data set and that would give us a good estimate of the odds ratio 
note that um, in the propensity score literature uh, the exposure modeling and the outcome modeling are considered separate just like a randomized clinical trial where you have your design stage and the analysis stage in here the exposure modeling is the design similar to the design stage and the outcome modeling is the analysis stage so in here if you feel there are more covariates that you need to adjust um, the, and that might reduce your uh, standard error of your treatment effect you can also do that so often you will see that the regression estimate that you will get the horse ratio is not very different than the um, estimate that you will get out of a propensity score model um, in that case why do you want to go for a propensity score model which is uh, involves much more steps compared to a regression model so the one idea is that the propensity score model is intuitive that gives you um, some benefit when you are trying to collaborate with non methodologists um, the diagnostic is very easy uh, for the propensity score uh, modeling um, versus in the regression modeling when you are diagnosing it with respect to your residual plots sometimes that can be cryptic um, in your propensity score matching approach what happens is that the exposure model and the outcome models are separate right uh, and that is a benefit in the sense that you can think about those two steps separately and also since um, you can use machine learning approaches um, to do your exposure modeling um, the assumption about linearity is relaxed uh, when you are modeling your propensity scores hopefully that gives you a um, basic idea about what is propensity score and um, some introductory idea about how to fit a propensity score model.